These are similar spiritual and worship practices shared by the Christian faith and the Muslim faith. How do Christians make a major decision? What spiritual resources do they use to discern their decision making? Is it the Bible? Do they seek a priest or a pastor's counsel? Do they rely on church liturgy or creed? Our Muslim sisters and brothers approach major decisions very similar to Christians. There are five pillars of worship in the Muslim spiritual life. The first and most significant pillar is the Shahada, which is considered as a confession of faith, which states the following. There is no God but God, and Muhammad is his prophet. The Shahada is the initial act of faith giving testimony to one's belief and about divine unity between God and the prophet Muhammad. The Shahada is very similar to the Christian confession of faith. For instance, this is the United Methodist confession of faith. We believe in one true, holy, and living God, eternal spirit, who is creator, sovereign, and preserver of all things visible and invisible. The second pillar is the Salat, which is a worship of prayer. This is an offering prayer that reminds the faithful. The remembrance of God is indeed the greatest virtue. This practice involves a physical posture of stillness facing the Kaaba in Mecca. And this devotion is done five times a day. And just like Salat, Christians also have the gesture and the posture of stillness that we consider as prayer. And in our churches, we have prayer rails where people can come and offer their petitions to God and spend some time in silence in a moment of reflection. The third pillar, Son, is a practice of fasting, and it occurs voluntarily throughout the year. But it is mandatory during the month of Ramadan, which is the ninth month of the year Ramadan is similar to Lenten season for Christians. It is a time to deepen spiritual devotion. Another spiritual practice that Christians tend to apply is fasting. And usually they're prompt to do this during the time of Lent. This is very similar to Psalm. The fourth pillar, Zakat, is a practice of generosity. The annual giving of a fixed amount of revenue for the benefit of the poor. The Quran encourages one purifying one's wealth by giving a portion of it away. For Christians, this represents tithing. Christians also practice generosity as part of their spirituality. This allows us to love God and love neighbor, which is manifesting God's love to the world and to our communities that we serve. The fifth pillar of pilgrimage is when Muslims gather at Mecca for five days. All the pilgrims that take part of Hajj wear white robes. The simple robes are referred to as a state of entering Ikram. Pilgrims pray these words in Arabic. Here I am, O God, at your command. Here I am at your command. You are without associate. Here I am at your command. To you are all praise, grace and dominion. You are without associate. And just like the pilgrims dressed in white that gather in Mecca to pray together, entering the time of Ikram, Christians also have the Psalms. Bless the Lord of my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent, and you set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot, you ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. After learning more about the five pillars of worship that our Muslim sisters and brothers practice, it is clear that we as Christians share a very similar way of worship and practice. It seems that both faith communities are inspired by God's divine love and display devotion very alike. Isn't that a beautiful connection between us to continue to explore? <laughs>